verify uh, you have to consider the measurement uncertainty while taking decisions how do we do that so uncertainty and conformity so one of the first rules to discuss the issue of the uncertainty measurement was, was the MIL standard. So this is the military standard 45662A of the United States. So this was during the war, Second World War. So there was a simple rule as for this standard. The magnitude of the expanded measurement uncertainty interval should be no larger than one fourth of the specification zone. So what is specification zone? So that is the allowed limits as per the designer. So how much variation in size is permitted by the designer. So that is the specification zone. So it is defined by the upper specification limit and lower specification limit, USL and LSL. So the rule is the uncertainty, expanded measurement uncertainty interval, that means it is a coverage interval, should not be larger than one fourth of the specification zone. And Accept the product if measurement result lies in the specification zone, otherwise reject. <clears throat> so if the measurement, that means measurement result means the average. Average lies in the specification zone, you accept. If it is outside, you reject. So this is shows uh, graphically what is happening. So upper specification limit is this. This is the lower specification limit. So between these two, we have the specification zone. So this is the symbol acceptance zone. And beyond this, we have the symbol rejection zone. And measurement result is here. Then we find out plus or minus 2u. So this will be the coverage interval. So capital U, not small u. So this is expanded uncertainty. So plus expanded uncertainty, minus expanded uncertainty. This total width is the coverage interval. So it should, if it is, if the measurement result lies in the specification zone, product is acceptable. But of course, this condition should be met. The coverage interval should be lower than USL minus LSL by four. That means the maximum uncertainty in the measurement is to be limited. So what method we use for measurement? So we have to ensure that two U is less than USL minus LSL by four. So U happens at the time of measurement, whereas USL LSL is specified by the designer. <coughs> so if 2U is less than USL minus LSL by 4, then only this rule can be applied. If it is more, then this measurement method is not valid, and you have to try a better measurement method. So if this rule is specified, is met, that is, if the measurement uncertainty is lower than this, then you can use this instrument. And if the average is within the specification zone, you accept it. If average is outside the specification zone, you reject it. So what is the doubt here? Because suppose it is very near the border. So there is a probability that the actual measurement may be outside also. But you neglect all those. If the average is within the specification zone, you accept it. So that is the mill standard rule. OK? <clears throat> so modifications were suggested. The problem is that near the specification limits, if it is away from the specification limits, there is no doubt. There's nothing to be worried of. But if it is near the specification limits, sometimes there's a possibility that a bad product will be accepted or a good product will get rejected. Both possibilities are there. So which is more dangerous? That depends on the nature of the product and the cost, criticality of the situation, etc. So people said that we need some modification to the specification limits. So a concept of guard banding was introduced. So the guard band is expressed as a percentage of the expanded uncertainty. The expanded uncertainty is capital U. So as a percentage of that, we have a guard band. And then we modify the acceptance zones by the guard band. We either increase or decrease the acceptance zone or rejection zone by an amount equal to the guard band. So there are two cases. First is stringent acceptance. Acceptance zone is decreased. So in this case, acceptance zone is decreased. So this is used for 
critical product or not costly product, cheap product. So critical product, so something is dangerous to human life and all, so you don't want to accept it like that. So what you do is you reduce the specification zone by an amount equal to the guard band. That, that case is called stringent acceptance. <clears throat> then the other case is relaxed acceptance. Acceptance zone is increased. So this is usually applied for costly product or non-critical product. So if it is very costly, you don't want to unnecessarily reject it. So we assume that the supplier will take care of, he will be trying to make uh, meet the specification as best as he can. So we give him the benefit of doubt. So that is relaxed acceptance. So it is not a critical product. So you don't mind accepting it if the product, even if it is slightly beyond the specification zone. So this is relaxed acceptance. So we have two cases, stringent acceptance and relaxed acceptance. So accepted limits are now modified. <clears throat> So the stringent acceptance or relaxed reduction, so both are same. That means you are stringent in accepting or very relaxed in rejecting. So that means you accept only if it is really within the specification and you are but relaxed in rejection. You reject, if you any doubt is there, you reject it. So like government offices, if they find any doubt in your application, they'll simply reject your application. Okay, so upper acceptance limit will be, we reduce the specification zone by an amount equal to the guard band. So guard band is inside the specification zone. So upper acceptance limit equal to USL minus G in. Then lower acceptance limit equal to LSL plus G in. So if it is stringent acceptance, the guard band is inside the specification zone. In the other case, stringent rejection. So you are very careful before rejecting it. So you are very stringent that it should not be rejected. And you are very relaxed in accepting. Even if there is a doubt, you accept it. Doesn't matter. After all, it's a cheap product. So then you can use upper acceptance limit equal to USL plus G out. That is upper acceptance limit equal to USL upper specification limit plus G out. So the guard band is applied, is added to the issue. So that means the acceptance limits are widened. So in case of stringent acceptance, sorry, stringent rejection or relaxed acceptance, the acceptance limits are widened. So lower acceptance limit is lower which will make it clear. So its logic is very simple. You have to understand the idea. So first you have to decide which of these cases should be applied. So that is the first thing. So you have to see well, what is the cost, what is the criticality, and then take a decision which case to be applied, whether guard band is in, inside or guard band is outside. Okay, so this is the graphical representation of the situation. So in stringent acceptance or relaxed rejection, so this is the lower specification limit. This is the upper specification limit. So this is the specification zone. Guard band is inside the specification zone. So we reduce the upper specification limit and lower specification limit by an amount equal to the guard band, which we express as a percentage of the expanded uncertainty. So this is the lower acceptance limit. This is the upper acceptance limit. So we reduce the specification zone by an amount equal to the guard band to get the acceptance limits. So this is the stringent acceptance zone. And beyond this is the relaxed rejection zone. So these both sides it is relaxed. So what we have done is actually we have reduced the specification zone by an amount equal to the expanded uncertainty. <coughs> okay. So what happens near the border is shown here in an enlarged view. 
So this is the specification zone. So this is the upper specification limit. So if the guard band is inside and the guard band can be any percentage of the expanded uncertainty. Usually we take equal to U, but it can be 50% U or 150% U, anything can be there. So it is very flexible. You can decide what should be the, this percentage. So if it is 100% of U, then this is capital U. So this is the upper acceptance limit. And this is the stringent acceptance zone. This is the relaxed rejection zone. Okay, so now for decision making, you are using this upper acceptance limit. So suppose the measurement result, the average is in this region, in the relaxed rejection region, what will be the decision? Even though it is within the specification zone, so for critical product, you don't want any possibility because here this small probability is there that it is actually beyond the upper specification limit, which you don't want to take a risk. So if the result is outside the specification zone, uh, if the result is outside the upper acceptance limit, you reject it. So since this, the product of the distribution is approximately the expanded uncertainty. So this will result in a rejection. And if result is within the stringent acceptance zone, then there is no probability that the product will reach beyond the upper specification limit, so you can safely accept it. Okay? So this is how we take decisions. So this is one important application of the measurement uncertainty concept. So in order to take decisions, we need to determine the measurement uncertainty. <clears throat> then the other case is relaxed access, acceptance of stringent rejection. Lower specification limit is here, upper specification limit is here. Specification zone varies from here to here. So now the guard band is outside. So upper acceptance limit will be upper specification limit plus guard band. And lower acceptance limit will be lower specification limit minus guard band. So this is the lower acceptance limit, this is the upper acceptance limit. So this region from here to here, from lower acceptance limit to upper acceptance limit is the relaxed acceptance zone. And the region beyond that is the stringent rejection zone. So if the average is in the stringent rejection zone, you reject the lot. So this is the specification zone. You change the upper access limits to beyond the specific upper specification limit. This is the modified acceptance zone, relaxed acceptance zone. This is the stringent rejection zone. Now, if the measurement result average is to the left of this upper acceptance limit, that means it is in the relaxed acceptance zone, so you can accept it. Even though there is a high probability that product is outside the specification, Still, you accept it because it is in case of non-critical product or costly product. Both you, even if it is outside, you accept it. <clears throat> so this is capital U expanded uncertainty. So since the average is within the relaxed asset zone, the product is acceptable. And if the average is beyond the relaxed access zone, that is it is in the stringent rejection zone, it is beyond the upper acceptance limit, then it is rejected. Okay, so now we apply this to a problem. The diameter of an engine valve is specified as 15 minus 0 0.08 m. So what is the meaning of this? So that means the diameter can vary from 14.92 to 15, okay? So that is the, the area of the specification limits. So upper specification limit is 15, lower specification limit is 14.92. The diameter of a wall was measured and found to be 14.99 plus or minus 0 0.02 mm, 95%. So this is a 95% coverage interval, plus or minus 0 0.02. 
the customer is overseas and the company policy is 100% guideline for stringent acceptance so in this question it is told usually it is it will not be told so you have to decide from the situation whether it is stringent acceptance or easy rejection so that decision is important so that is first step you have to do and now you have to decide whether the value is acceptable or not so it is 14.99 it is very close to the border but there is a probability that 14.99 plus 02 that is can go up to 15.01 which is beyond the specification limit so since it is a critical product stringent acceptance we don't want that risk <clears throat> what is the guard band is 50 percent so for 100 percent guard band we increase the upper specification limit by an amount equal to the guard band 0.02 for 50% guard band, we increase the specification by a limit by an amount equal to 50% of the expanded uncertainty. So we increase by 15 plus 0 0.01, 50% of the expanded uncertainty. So stringent acceptance with 100% guard band. So specification on this one, 14.92 to 15. So 14.94. So 14.92 plus 0 0.02 is 14.94. 15 minus 0 0.02 is 14.98. So between these two, we have the stringent acceptance zone. So if the measurement result is within this stringent acceptance zone, then only you will accept it because it is a stringent acceptance situation. So 14.99 is not in the stringent acceptance zone. So you have to rejected <clears throat> okay so that is actually the ASME standard and the ISO standard actually does not give this much flexibility so ISO permits only one type of guard band that is 100% guard band and they say you at the supplier end you practice stringent acceptance and at customer end you practice stringent rejection so there's a different concept being used there of course uh, the experts wanted to change but iso is a democratic organization so every country has one vote so united states or germany they have one vote at the same time Uganda will also have one vote. So the delegates thought that these Western countries were allowed to reject their product in case they supplied anything. They say it is they could not understand all this, so they rejected the proposal. They did not allow this to be revised. So the ISO issued this standard as a guide. Okay, so along with the guide to uncertainty, guide to expression of uncertainty, gum, there is one booklet on conformance. So we can download that, which explains in detail this theory. So anyway, ISO is criticized by most experts, but because of the democratic policy, they could not do anything. So selection of a decision rule is a business decision. So it depends on the situation. So how critical is the product? So people should be given the freedom. It should not be always like this. Stringent acceptance for supplier or stringent rejection for the customer is not a good policy. So ASME permits any guard band depending on the economic situation, whereas ISO, there is no flexibility. <clears throat>